Welcome. Well, there's been a lot of uh, news lately about what's going on with Bear Stearns and and Carlisle Capital, and and I go to these parties and I start explaining to people because it's very exciting and it's actually very important to all of our collective futures and and the whole health of the financial system. And I feel like people's eyes start to glaze over. Uh, so with that in mind, I've decided to to take a, a little bit of hiatus from kind of the core math and physics videos and actually do some some accounting and finance videos because I think what's happening in the world right now is extremely extremely important. And I'm not just going to go straight into what's going into you know Carlisle and, and Thornburg and, and all of these characters. Um, because I think the newspapers do that, but a lot of people don't understand kind of the basic accounting. You know, what is a write down? What does it mean when you don't have liquidity? A in really tangible ways. So I'm going to use kind of the same Khan Academy techniques to hopefully explain some of this. So I'm going to start with just a very basic accounting, a basic accounting concept of the balance sheet. And you might have a sense of what it is. So let's say a scenario. Let's say I want to buy a house. So this is, let me draw a house. So let's say this is the house I want to buy. And the owner of this house is asking for a million dollars for this house. And I like the house, and I think that's a fair price. Other houses in the neighborhood also went for a million dollars or whatever. Maybe they went for more, so I think it's actually a good deal. But all I have in my pocket, all, in my, all I have in my pocket is, is, all I have is, let's say I have $250,000. So I have $250,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my balance sheet before I do anything, before I go to try to get the house. So what is my pre, my before house balance sheet? Well, what are my assets? So let's say, I'm going to write down assets. Assets. Well, before we know what my assets are, let me tell you what an asset is. An asset is something that has, that's going to give you some future economic benefit. So for example, cash is an asset. Why is cash an asset? Because in the future, you can use that cash to, to get stuff from people or make them do things or buy stuff. You can, you know, in a month from now, you can use your cash and you can, you can make someone dance for you. Or you can buy a car. Or you can go on vacation. So there's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, I don't know if someone's dancing for you is an actual economic benefit, but, but you get the idea. So cash could be an asset. A house could be an asset because the economic benefit you get in the future is you get to live in it and not freeze when it's freezing outside. So that's what an asset is. So what, is, what are my assets before I buy the house or get a loan or all of the things that are about to happen? Well, I have cash and I have $250,000 worth of cash. Now what are my liabilities? Liabilities. I'm going to write the liabilities on the left hand side. I think that's the convention, but I forget, but it doesn't matter. What are my liabilities? Well, a liability is something that it's an obligation to someone else, kind of an economic obligation to someone else. So if you know, if I take a loan from someone, I owe them interest or I have to pay them back the, the actual value of the loan one day. Um, say I have an IOU where I promise to dance for someone in the future, that, that could be a liability. It would be hard to value, but that's something that I have to do in the future. But what are my liabilities here? Well, the example I gave, I'm just Sal. I have no debt. I've paid off my college loans, everything, and I have $250,000 in cash. So what are my liabilities before I buy the house? Well, nothing. I, I don't have any liabilities. I don't owe anybody anything. And that's actually, that to me is the definition of freedom. So I have zero liabilities. So what is my equity? My equity. And you've probably heard this word, people borrowing their equity and all of these things. So I'm going to give you a little equation, actually, just to take a little bit of a tangent, that assets, assets, A for assets, is equal to liabilities plus equity, right? So in this case, our assets are $250,000. My liabilities are what? I owe, no, I know, I owe nothing to, any, to nobody. I don't know if that was correct. But anyway, I owe nothing to anyone. So my liabilities are zero. So my equity must be $250,000, right? My equity is also $250,000. So in this case, if I made a balance sheet before I enter into any transactions, and let me make it look a little bit like a, like a balance sheet. My assets are $250,000. I have no liabilities. And then my equity, equity would be $250,000. And if I were to draw this graphically, I actually should probably draw it like this. I have no liability, so let me let me draw another little mini balance sheet here. Let me draw it as a neat square. Well, you probably can't see that square. Let me switch colors too. So I put my assets on the right hand side, and I'll say there I have 250k of cash. 
And the left-hand side, I have no liabilities, and I will just say I have equity of 250. Now, equity might not make a lot of sense to you right now, because I'm kind of just saying, well, my equity is equal to my cash. In general, equity is just what you own. What, after all of your assets and liabilities are kind of resolved, or they're cleared up, what do you have left over? That's equity. So in this situation, after I pay off all of my debts, what do I have left over? Well, I have no debts, so I have $250,000 in cash left over. This will start to make sense when I go to the bank now to get a loan to buy this house. So this house is a million dollar house, right? So how much of a loan do I need? Well, I have 250,000 cash, so I'll go to the bank for a loan for the remainder for $750,000. So let's let me draw draw the bank. This is the bank with the big dollar sign. It's made out of granite to show you that it can never fail. It's going to be there forever even if they do silly things like well, I won't go into all of the silly things that they do, but they do many silly things. We'll go into that later. But the bank is going to give me another $750,000 in cash, right? And in return, I'm giving them, essentially, an IOU. An IOU, and I'm going to pay interest, right? So they're going to hold this little security that says, Sal owes me $750,000, and he has to give me you know, 10% interest every year, so $75,000 a year, something like that. And in return, I get $750,000 in cash. So what does my balance sheet look like now? Well, let me draw it. Let me make sure my balance sheet now looks, let me draw it like a square, because I think the visual representation is helpful. So, and then I will split it. So what are all my assets now? I had $250,000, and now I got another $750,000, right? I got another $750,000 from the bank. So now what are my assets? Well, 250 plus 750. I now have cash of one million dollars. One million dollars. What are my liabilities? Well, my liability, that's something that I owe to someone else. Well, I owe the bank $750,000. So liabilities, I'll just say L. L for liabilities because I'm running out of space. and My wife was complaining that I make these things very um, hard to read, but you know, what can I do? Anyway, so my liabilities, I owe the bank $750,000. So that's a liability. And then the equity is Essentially, I mean, we look at this formula, right? Assets equal liability plus equity. If this is a million, this is 750. What, is, what do I have left over? Well, I have $250,000 left over. That's my equity. And I think, hopefully, the concept of equity is, making, is starting to make a little more sense. Now we have, uh, it, you know, I could say that I have a million dollars, and some people are like that. They think they're a millionaire when they have a million dollar of assets, but they don't consider, well, they might have a million dollar of assets, but they might owe other people $900,000. So I wouldn't consider that person a millionaire. They're more of a hundred thousand heir. But your assets might be a million dollars, but you're not nearly a millionaire because you still owe other people 750000 What you have left over, that really is your net worth or you know what you can have claim to. And that's your equity. Sometimes it's called owner's equity. Or if there was a bunch of people pitching together, it'd be called shareholder's equity. And maybe I'll do a little bit more on that in the future. But hopefully now you can see that the balance sheet's starting to, make a, a, starting to seem a little bit useful. But I have the cash, and I, I've took the lo I took the loan from the bank. But now I still haven't bought the house yet. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to give my cash to the house, to the owner, the old owner of the house, or maybe this Toll Brothers, they just built this McMansion for me. So I give them $1 million, and in return, they give me the deed to the house, or they, I could just say they give me the house, right? I, it's, the house is always there, but you know, it's really just the contract and all of the legal structure that I get around it and all the property rights and all of that. But that gets getting too philosophical. So now, what does my balance sheet look like? Instead of cash, and I think I'm running out of space and time to draw another balance sheet. I don't have cash worth a million dollars. I now have a house worth a million dollars, assuming that it really is worth it and that was the correct price. I didn't overpay it, whatever. I now have my assets are a million dollar house, and I owe the bank $750,000. So what's left over for me is $250,000 of equity. I'm about to run out of time, so I'm going to leave you. Um, from this video. And in the next video, I'm going to start explaining what happens if the value of the house goes up or down, or you need cash, and all of these interesting things. And uh, we'll start to get, learn a little bit more about what's going on in the world. See you soon.